Welcome to Briar City Showcase, I am Briar Cisneros, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about five bands where there's two sides. There's one side people absolutely adore, and then there's the other side where people absolutely hate them with a burning passion. So I do own albums by these bands, so I do enjoy them to an extent, so I'm going to try not to be too biased. Um, but there are some bands here where I can totally understand why. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on these five bands. It doesn't matter if you love them or you hate them. Just let me know your opinions on them. And let's try to be civil about this. So without further ado, let's do this. So the first one I'm going to talk about, which I will say it's my least favorite of these five, of these five bands. Um, and I can totally understand why people don't like them. Of course, I'm going to talk about U2 first. Um, with U2, there are many reasons why people don't like them. Uh, of course, recently there was a whole there was that whole thing about iTunes. They pretty much gave their album to everybody's everybody's iTunes account, and people hated it. it was, um, so that that was a whole thing. Um, musically, you know, they kind they started out as like a post punk band, but then they quickly went away from that sound once they got popular. Um, then there's, of course, with the Edge. You know, he has his guitar parts are very simple. Uh, but you know it's because of the guitar effects that kind of give them that give them that more grand sound and people are hit or miss on bono on vocals and of course bono is known for being a, quite a bit pretentious um but yeah i can go on about about u2 but i do enjoy u2 to to an extent um i love a lot of their hits and yeah the edges guitar you know they're not mm, too crazy but you know the effects do add uh, do add some great melodies to to this band. They definitely sound great, and of course, this is by far my favorite U two album. Of course, the Joshua Tree, which has a lot of great songs on here. You know, I mean the big hits on here. The three it starts off with the three biggest hits on here, which is they're great. Uh, Bullet the Blue Sky, uh, Running to Stand Still, Red Hill, Mi Mining Town. Um, trip through your trip through your wires, but yeah, it's a great it's a great album. Um, but yeah, I totally understand why people don't like you two. Um, um, and if I'm gonna be honest, I probably I probably there's definitely some albums where I definitely probably won't want in my collection. So that's my opinions on you two. Good band, not one of my favorites. Um, next up, I do enjoy this band quite a bit i haven't heard everything by them but um i know they have a pretty big fan base um of course i'm going to talk about kiss now kiss has a massive fan base you know the kiss army kiss nation i don't i sadly don't know the actual name that just shows you how big of a fan i am but i do i still do enjoy kiss you know people always have the stigma of kiss you know kind of like they're kind of like a kitty like a kid's band because you know how they look they kind of have a cartoony look to them um and you know musically there's there's like nothing deep with them at all it's just your typical 70s music um but you know i enjoy i enjoy the this their sound you know again like i said there's nothing deep about it but they just sound like they're having a great time and you can tell on their live shows they they definitely weren't weren't slacking in terms of the live shows because they definitely want to give you a give you money's worth when it comes to a, to a performance. So I respect them for that, and I do like the and I do like the makeup. You know, it's it's, it's iconic. Yeah, does it overshadow the music? Probably, but you know, it worked for them. You know, it it made them stand out. Um, so yeah, I enjoy Kiss. I don't have much by Kiss. I only have this live album and the debut, of course, which I can, I, I, I can pull out right now. I've shown this before. But yeah, I enjoy Kiss. But I can kind of get why people don't like them. Um, so yeah, that's my stance on Kiss. Alright, so next up is actually the subject of that delightful meme behind me who are actually playing behind me as we speak of course i'm talking about the great white snake i'm going to be frank here i absolutely love white snake um great band here of course this, i'm i'm showing their breakthrough album which of course it was their 1987 album um had, had many hit singles like still the night give me all your love um children of the night um 
of course, of course, here I go again, of course. Um, so yeah, this was massive album. However, because of how big this was, it was definitely set up for, you know, for a little bit of backlash by a lot of hard rock fans because, you know, by this point, as you can see by the looks of them, they definitely looked like your typical 80s hair metal, glam metal band. Um, you know, lyrically, th there's nothing deep with them as well. Kind of similar with Kiss. I know a lot of their lyrics dealt with women. Um, mostly women, sex, you know, that's the whole thing. Um, but I don't care. I love this band. Um, Debbie, David Coverdale, tremendous vocalist. Love his vocals. Um, just especially on this one. Like he was definitely like pushing his vocal range on this one, which sounds great. Um, but the thing is about White Snake is that, like, this album was huge, but what most people didn't know, especially here in America, nobody knew that White Snake actually had been going on for a long time. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, um, um, people already knew who White Snake were in Britain because they have released tons of albums, but none of the none of their early albums really did much business here. Um, so. So if you aren't aware, in the early days, White Snake were a very, they were very much, very much a blues rock band. Blues rock, hard rock, definitely almost not quite Deep Purple, but definitely, definitely sounds like your typical, you know, late seventies, early eighties rock. Um, and they sound great, you know. These albums actually had some Deep Purple members, like John Lord played on on keyboards on some of these albums. I think Ian Pace played on drums on one of them. Um, so yeah, like. Albums like Trouble, I gotta censor this one, I've shown this one before, but Love Hunter, okay, Ready and Willing, Come and Get It, Saints and Sinners, like all great hard rock albums here that most people aren't aware of, and they don't sound a thing like what they would do in the, in the late 80s, so if you, are, you aren't a fan of the loud, metallic sound of the 80s then i suggest check out a lot of these early albums and you might be surprised what you find so yeah that is white snake that's my stance on them and by the way um you can also probably check out sliding in as well it was the album before the 87 album but i think this is worth checking out as well all right next up i'll just make sure my background's still going yes it is still white snake by the way um, next up, we're going to talk about Styx. Now, Styx kind of has kind of almost a similar thing with White Snake because the thing about the White Snake was was the hits that kind of kind of painted the band in the negative light. Kind of a similar thing with Styx. Um, of course, we know Styx for a lot of you know you know Babe was their biggest hit. It was their only number one hit, and of course that was a ballad, and that of course labeled. This would give them the label as a soft rock act. And, you know, Six had their soft rock, soft rock songs, of course, but they could rock out too, you know? And of course, the Grand Illusion is a terrific album, has a lot of great songs. Grand Illusion, Feeling, uh, Fooling Yourself, I almost said Feeling Yourself, oh boy. Um, uh, Superstars, of course, the big hit, Come Sail Away is a great song. Um, Man in the Wilderness, uh, Castle Walls is a great deep cut, so, and everything else is, is fantastic as well. So I am a Styx fan, as I've, as I've shown many times, but, you know, people don't like them. And there's a couple reasons, you know, like I already mentioned the soft rock thing. Um, of course, the big hits were played a lot. People got tired of them, which kind of coined the phrase corporate rock. Um, um, but, you know, I don't really think Styx were a corporate rock act at all. Um, and I, and another thing, you know, comes down to Dennis DeYoung. Uh, Dennis DeYoung, of course, was the lead singer for a long time. Uh, people just weren't a fan of his kind of like his, his theatrical, almost, uh, almost Broadway-esque vocals. Some people just didn't like the sound of that, but people didn't, people always forget there were other singers in Styx. I mean, Styx has three singers. There was Dennis DeYoung, Tommy Shaw, and Jamie. James Young. So if you weren't a fan of Dennis's vocals, then there's still Tommy and JY you can check out. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Sticks. 
I think they're a great band, but you know, some people don't. So that's all I'm gonna say. And I also suggest you check out this one as well. It has a lot of great songs on here. And Queen of Spades is a great deep cut by them. It's Dennis on vocals, and this just shows Dennis could rock out. He, he didn't just write ballads. He can write a good rock tune. So Queen of Spades, off piece of, Pieces of Eight. Great song. All right, so last up. Um, now I'm a huge fan of this particular band. They're, I would, I wouldn't be. I'm definitely not ashamed of saying they are one of my favorite bands of all time. But there are people out there who aren't a fan in the slightest. And of course, I'm going to talk about Journey. The CD nearly flew out, but I caught it. So Journey is here. Absolutely love Journey. I mean, Steve Perry is one of the greatest vocalists of all time, in my opinion. Absolutely love him. Um, but you know, people just don't like Journey because again, similar with the Sticks, they had many hit singles that many people got tired of. You know, you hear Don't Stop Believing constantly nowadays. And again, people are sick. <laughs> there are many people who are sick of that song. And you know, they also wrote a lot of ballads. Um, so yeah, they have their fair share of haters, but I don't mind them. I love, I love ballads. I love to see Perry's vocals. And you know, and most people always don't talk about the the music because Neil Sean is a great guitar player. He has many great guitar riffs and solos on, throughout Journey's career, uh, but people don't really pay much attention to them, which is kind of a shame, really. Um, and I will say, for those who aren't a fan of of Journey, um, I suggest check out their early stuff because there are people who don't like Steve Perry's vocals, but they did. But th most people don't know that Steve Perry was not the original vocalist for Journey. Um, so their first three albums had a different singer. Of course, if you know Santana, then you might know Greg R Greg Rowley. I hope I said that right. But Greg Rowley was who sung for Santana. Of course, you might know him from. The song Black Magic Woman, that's Greg Rowley on vocals, but he was actually a vocalist for Journey early on. Um, so, I only have this one from the early period, but again, there's three albums from with in this period. Um, this is their debut, and it's great. Like, it sounds, pretty much sounds nothing like this. Um, it it's, has a bit of jazz fusion in it. Um, there's a little bit of prog elements as well. And, and you know, the guitar work is, again, terrific uh, on here. It's still Neil, Neil Sean on um, guitar here. And, yeah, it's, it sounds great. So if you aren't a fan of, of you know, your, t your AOR rock albums during this period, I suggest you check out the, the early stuff from Journey. You might be surprised on what you might hear. So there you have it. Those are five bands that pe either that people either love or hate. Again, in the comments below, let me know your opinions on these bands, whether you love or hate them. At the end of the day, if I'm going to be honest, like at the end of the day, if, if you don't like these bands, it's totally fine. We all hear these artists differently. Um, we have our own personal tastes, so no shame of loving. There's no shame in hating. So let's in the comments just let's try to be civil here. Is all I'm saying. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. And of course, subscribe for more. We are nearly at 100 subscribers. We have, I, last time I checked, we have about ten or nine or 10 more to go. So we're almost there. So we're definitely, hopefully we'll make it by the end of the month. So I look forward to that. And so thanks again for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.